In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at some uh, other members of the courtroom work group, uh, the defendants, the victims, and the witnesses. Uh, these are all members that are typically temporary members of the, the courtroom work group. Um, they uh, are not as uh, frequent flyers in the courtroom process as the, uh, the, the prosecutor, uh, the judge, the defense attorneys. Uh, typical characteristics of a defendant, uh, a male, uh, there's overrepresentation of minority offenders, uh, they typically have prior arrests, typically have prior convictions, under the age of 35, uh, many of them are already on pretrial release or receive pretrial release, uh, many of them are there for drug crimes, very, very popular type of criminal offense. Uh, other types, uh, the next most common type is property crimes followed by violent crimes. In terms of the racial uh, overrepresentation of uh, minorities, non-white community members in the, uh, the defendant population, uh, compared to the likelihood of a white male going to prison, a black male has a six times higher likelihood, a uh, Hispanic or Latino uh, male has a two and a half times the likelihood, uh, overall, we have about 1% of American males incarcerated right now, uh, about a half of, uh, percent of white males, 1.2% uh, of Latino or Hispanic males, and almost 3% of black males are imprisoned currently in this country. Overall, lifetime likelihoods, just based off these statistical numbers, not counting in uh, any other sociodemographic or any other factors, um, African American males in the United States have a one in three chance of going to prison at some point during their life. Uh, Hispanic or Latino males have a one in six chance, and white males have a one in seventeen chance of at some some point in their life going to prison. Uh, and as you can see, uh, one in seventeen is too high, uh, but that is the smallest of the three uh, representations. Um, the most stark being for African American males, basically having a you know one in three chance. Of going to prison at some point during their lives. Uh, the defendants play uh, typically a very benign role in a courtroom proceeding during the trial. Uh, there are some that um, cause more problems than they offer solutions to. The first is the pro se defendant, uh, the person that represents themselves. The saying uh, that goes along with that is that the uh, the lawyer that defends himself has a fool for a client. Um, there's a reason why people are uh, guaranteed a right to an attorney. It, it's, it's someone that's a step back from the situation, that it's not as um, involved in what's going on, um, and it's oftentimes, not often, it's always better to have a separate attorney than to try to represent yourself. Uh, there's also been the recent advent of uh, social media uh, becoming more of a problem for defendants, um, not adhering to, to rules and regulations set by a judge during a pretrial process, or not following the uh, required uh, sentence, um, or just you know having too many wine coolers and getting on Facebook at 1 o'clock in the morning and writing a bunch of dumb shit that's uh, not helpful for your case. Um, social media is a scourge on society. It will continue to be a scourge on society uh, as long as people continue to use it. Uh, more or less, the defendants are suffered by the work group. Um, the defense attorney has to watch them do dumb things that hurt themselves. Um, the prosecution usually sees the uh, defendant having an uh, unrealistic, unrealistic expectation of what the whole process is going to be like. Um, and the judge is the same way, having to basically um, relearn the person from all of the falsehoods that they've seen on uh, television and in film, portrayals of uh, what it is to be a defendant in a case. Uh, for witnesses uh, and victims, um, the trial process is not really any better than it is for any other, any other members of the, uh, that are involved in this process. Um, there's a lot of frustration with how long the process takes, uh, what sort of things are required of them, how many, if, a, if it's a witness, how many times they have to take off work to come to discuss this case or to offer deposition of the case. Um, 
for the victims, oftentimes it's just the, the, the time frame. Uh, can be years after the harm is done before the criminal case has even uh, been dealt with. Um, also, there is issues with witness intimidation. Um, it's not very common, but it is something that takes place, again, depending on what the circumstances are of the offense, where it took place, who the defendant is. Um, sometimes that makes it more or less likely that there's going to be uh, potential retaliation, um, intimidation, um, or if the person does testify, their own social status within their um, living community might, might be changed. Um, and then also just that, that day in court is a very acute source of stress. So people don't want to don't show up. They don't want to relive the experience as the victim. They don't want to relive the experience as the witness. Um, and it can be a very, a very acute source of stress that some people would just rather um, stray away from. Um, because of some of these issues, there is oftentimes a lack of cooperation with witnesses. Um, they don't want to be a part of the process. They're worried about the intimidation. They're worried about their status in their community. The idea that snitches get stitches, that's a bullshit excuse that was created by criminals to try to intimidate people not to uh, commit, uh, or not to testify against them. Typically, snitches get uh, monetary rewards returning in criminals. So that, that, that should be the saying, is that snitches get, get paid. Um, also, with um, the pet pitfalls of social media, um, with the, the perpetrator, the victim can also be deified or demonized in the same way. Um, looking at people's past posts or um, what they've done in the past, what they've said in the past, or even what they're saying in conjunction with what's going on, um, can be taken out of context, can be taken in incorrect context, um, and it can lead to victims um, feeling um, that they're being mistreated by the criminal justice system because of what is happening to them in uh, other social systems, particularly uh, social media, which again, social media is the devil. If you plan on being in police or any professional field i would delete it all now um every snapchat you've ever sent is saved by snapchat uh every post that you post is saved by facebook uh facebook sells those posts to uh other things you subscribe for so if you're wondering why particular things are showing up on your netflix account it's probably because facebook sold your messages to netflix um so that they could better recommend movies for you to watch Uh, characteristics of the, uh, the victim relative to the offender. Typically, the, the victim knows the offender. Um, it's really just sort of based on the offense, who the victim's going to be. Um, if we're talking about um, sexual victimization, um, or we're talking about uh, street homicide, um, there are demographics that are more likely to be victimized of particular offenses. Um, certain phishing scams, online scams, um, telephone scams work to target um, uneducated in terms of technology, um, elders and things like that. It really just depends on what the crime is, is who the likely victim is going to be. Um, another aspect of this, uh, in terms of victims in this process is intimate partner violence, um, mandatory arrest policies, how those can be problematic. Um, and also just looking at what type of a victim a person is. Is this a serial victimization, serial predatory victimization, or is this common couple violence? Um, there's a lot of um, specificities that have to be worked out in really every case to um, to make sure that uh, the, the needs of the individual, the victims, and even the offenders are met by the system and the way that they are processed. Uh, we've seen a lot of advancements in um, for the rights of the w of, of witnesses and victims uh, over the last 30 to 40 years. Um, victim and witness assistance programs to provide things like uh, loss of um, loss of uh, a paycheck for having to take a day off work, um, psychological counseling, things like that. Victim compensation funds to pay for damages that potentially couldn't be paid for by a destitute uh, perpetrator. 
um, the Victims Bill of Rights, which has been incorporated in various states, various degrees, the link there to the one in California, um, and also the advent and the implementation of the victim impact statements during the sentencing phase. Um, so it, while it doesn't matter, um, it sounds cold to say, well, it doesn't matter how someone's murder has affected their family in a, in a guilt or innocence phase. It is relevant in the sentencing phase and the effect that that loss that person has had on the people around them. So by incorporating uh, things that might not be relevant in a guilt or innocence phase at trial into the sentencing phase, it allows more people to have a better measure of procedural justice um, in the eventual outcomes of these uh, cases. So again, that's just a overview there of the roles that the victims and offenders play um, in the trial process.